So uh, a lot of folks in my clinics will ask how I got into ice climbing. Uh, it's kind of an interesting question. Uh, you know, for me growing up as a, as a young climber, uh, I wasn't so focused on any one particular discipline in, in climbing. I wasn't just a rock climber. What I really, really wanted to do was have a, a, a wide base of knowledge so that I can travel efficiently, quickly, safely in some of the world's highest places in mountains. And uh, for me, ice climbing or learning how to ice climb was sort of the natural evolution in preparing myself and, and building up the skills that I would need in my future in exploring some of the greater ranges. Now, uh, it's important to note that as much as I uh, used to be quite an ice climbing fanatic, these days uh, I'm definitely more drawn to alpine uh, rock climbing objectives. So that's typically traveling to uh, ranges like the Himalaya, the Karakoram, or the Andes, and uh, finding uh, new uh, formations, formations that have never been climbed and, and opening new climbing routes on them. And uh, I'm drawn mostly to rock routes, but oftentimes when you're in these greater ranges, we're finding that uh, despite the fact that you have a beautiful uh, you know, 500, 600, 1200 meter wall, uh, there's oftentimes just a little bit further to go to the summit. And uh, when you're dealing with elevations as high as what we find, uh, say, in Asia, in the greater ranges, uh, we're almost always dealing with an environment that is still trapped in winter. Right, so uh, we might have been rock climbing for uh, a good ways, but then we top out on that wall and we discover that, wow, there's only a couple hundred meters to go to the very top of this thing that's never been climbed before. It would be a shame to have to turn around and to give up the first ascent of this formation. And so uh, on these climbs, we're oftentimes forced to, uh, in addition to the rock climbing equipment, carry with us some ice climbing equipment for uh, a little bit of uh, snow and ice that leads us to the very, very tops of some of these peaks. And uh, I really wanted to make sure that my skill set was uh, well-rounded enough so that uh, those types of climbing objectives didn't have to end at the wall, that they could actually uh, go all the way to their conclusion at the summit. And uh, yeah, I learned to throw ice tools uh, at ice clinics, actually, oddly enough, ironically enough, uh, in New England, both at the Adirondack Mountain Festival and the Mount Washington Ice Festival. I attended uh, clinics. Uh, that are actually taught by folks that I teach next to these days. So it's kind of a cool full circle. A lot of those same uh, instructor athletes are still in the business and uh, I would be lying if I didn't say that I, I didn't borrow some material from all of those instructors that I've formerly had uh, yeah, teach, me the, teach me the ropes, so to say. But yeah, that's kind of how I got into this whole game. And, and I think that, uh, again, for me, it's more of a, a utilitarian uh, sort of motivation. I, I'm, I'm more of an explorer of the high places in the world, and uh, I wouldn't necessarily call myself a mixed climber or an ice climber. I have these skills uh, sort of to augment uh, all of the skills that I take with me into the mountains so that I'm able to, as I mentioned, climb these first ascents uh, and return safely uh, and have a good time with my partners.